about the penguins, but I'm also going to tell you about the exhibit here, because uh, it is based on Robin Island, uh, which is found off the coast of Cape Town, throughout in South Africa. Over the years, the island has had many different uses. So originally, it was just a place for sailors to, uh, for sailors to stop off and get uh, fresh supplies of food and water. Um, it has also been a hospital for people suffering from leprosy or other chronically ill diseases. It's probably most well known for being a prison, um, and its most famous inmate was actually Nelson Mandela. So he spent 18 of his 27 years uh, imprisonment actually out on Robin Island. Um, but nowadays the prison has closed, and since 1997 the island has actually become a museum and a world heritage site. So it's considered a very safe and secure haven for many different types of animals uh, and wildlife really. So there's 23 species of mammal and 132 species of birds. So all the birds you can see in the exhibit are found out on Robin Island. Obviously the most popular ones and the ones that you guys are here to see this afternoon are our African penguins. Um, now we've got a colony of 22 currently and it is really nice to see that they are actually swimming in the water this afternoon and uh, they've just finished their molt and when they're molting they're not waterproof so the last few weeks we've been lucky if we've even had any penguins actually out at this time of day they must know that uh, we've got a special guest i think that's probably what it is um now they are clumsy on the land they are not designed for walking about uh, they are designed for swimming now they are birds and they do have wings but their wings have been fused to form more like clippers really so they don't fly through the air like other birds but they definitely fly through that water they've got three main swimming styles that you can look out for this afternoon uh, so the first one is surface swimming that's where they're going to be swimming along the top of the water they have their heads above and they're going to be looking to see where edda's going to throw that next fish now obviously out in the wild they're not going to have a nice kind human uh, throwing fish into the water from a bucket but they will do exactly the same thing and they will look out for groups of seabirds that's a really good indicator that there is a shoal of fish for the penguins to go and gobble up second time is called underwater flying so that's when they dive down into the water and they are literally flying through it they have a nice torpedo shaped body and their little tail actually acts a bit like a rudder to help steer and change direction now the last type is the most exciting form it's called porpoising um, and it's very similar to what you see dolphins doing in the wild where they jump in and out of the water at high speed so they can actually reach between 20 and 30 miles per hour they tend to do it on the longer fishing trips it actually helps reserve their energy quite nicely um, now our penguins only really do porpoising when they are excited uh, if they're feeling a bit playful so do keep your eyes out for that uh, this afternoon now obviously they are fish eaters and they are being uh, fed on some very small silvery fish today which are called sprats sardines anchovies uh, but they will take squid and crustaceans as well they have got some very sharp powerful beaks for grabbing hold of very slippery prey uh, and once they've got them they don't want to let them go so they actually have a very spiky tongue and that helps them to keep a really good grip on that fish now you might notice when they catch one they always spin it round and they swallow it down head first and that's just simply uh, the most comfortable way to swallow a whole fish down so all fish eating birds do it um, it's just something they learn to do from a young age really um, when it comes to fishing they work together uh, so they actually force the fish into forming a nice big ball and then each penguin takes it in turn to split that ball of fish up uh, and gather as many fish as it possibly can along the way really um, they can dive to depths of 30 to 50 meters but 150 meters have been recorded um, and the average dive lasts about two and a half minutes now african penguins aren't actually doing particularly well out in the wild they are very endangered at the moment they're actually declining at quite a rapid speed um, and we believe that if they continue to, to decline at that rate um, this species of penguin might be extinct uh, within the next 15 years so just have a moment to think about that it's pretty much in all of your lifetimes this species of penguin might not be found in its uh, wild environment anymore um, there's a few things that face them as problems uh, habitat destruction nest site disturbances overfishing so we like to eat the same fish as them we go out we fish for our supplies 
that has an impact on how much fish is left in the sea, but it also means that they're having to go further and further afield uh, to find food. A big problem for the African penguins is actually oil spills. Now, as they are flightless birds, they can't escape the oil spills at sea. They might also be affected by them on the land as well. Uh, the oil gets into their feathers, it affects their waterproofing and can eventually lead to hypothermia. They may also try and preen the oil out of those feathers and they end up poisoning themselves. Um, so it is a big problem. Uh, in the year 2000, they was, there was a very large oil spill that did affect the Robin Island colony. Um, and actually, they had to rescue 20,000 individual penguins. Um, they captured them all up, which was in itself quite a big process. Um, and then they started the very lengthy uh, process of actually washing that oil out of those feathers. It's not an easy thing to do. They then actually had to catch up a further 20,000 penguins and relocate them before um, the oil spill was a problem for them as well. So it was actually the largest wild animal rescue um, to date. So the oil spill is a big problem for these guys. Um, so it is important that we help them in any way that we can. Um, so there's lots of research projects so to find out as much as we possibly can about the penguins and their habits. Um, but also, by keeping them here at Birdworld, we're actually helping them in a couple of ways. Uh, firstly, we get to tell you guys about them every day and raise awareness. Uh, and also, uh, lovely kind people like yourselves often donate money as well to help our conservation funds. Um, but we get to breed them. And by breeding them in captivity, you're basically creating a safety net. So you'll make sure that these guys will be around for future generations. So that's what we do here at Birdwells. Um, so this year was the first year that these guys felt comfortable and settled in their new home. Um, since we built it, that's 2011. Um, so it was the first year really that they bred for us. Um, so although they are all captive bred birds, so they're not wild in any way, their breeding season reflects the wild breeding season. So basically they breed at the same time of year as their wild cousins, which means they are actually breeding in the winter months here in the UK. Um, so December was the first um, egg was laid, and then our first chick hatched out in January. He was completely parent reared. He has been named Little Robin. Um, he is that kind of in the middle, just on the edge of the water at the moment. He is very easy to spot because he is not black and white yet. So he hasn't got that distinctive black horseshoe shape on the front of his chest there. He won't be black and white until he's about a year old when he molts through his proper adult plumage. So that's Little Robin. If you can't spot him, we have got two others that are up on the platform with us. And these guys are up here because they've been hand reared by our keeping team. Um, so at the moment, they currently believe they are little humans in penguin costumes. Um, they have been in uh, the exhibit for a couple of months now. They do mix in with the others, um, but they are still being hand fed by us. Um, it takes them a long time to be kind of weaned off, but they are slowly learning how to catch their own fish at the moment. So that is why we are accompanied by two penguins up here. Um, so 